I've been coding now for 25 years, and if I started again, these are the things that I would do differently. And for you, if you're starting to code, then follow these tips so I can show you how you can become a great programmer. So the first tip that I would recommend when you're learning to code is to learn the basics around programming. And these basics are the same around no matter what language that you choose to learn. So when I say the basics, I say, for example, like if, else, uh, doing, doing loops, memory management, those are the basics around programming. Every language that you choose will have the same things. If you learn these, no matter what language you choose, you're gonna find the same ideas. And you can learn the basics around programming in a lot of places in the internet. There are a lot of courses around there that you can choose one to learn. The second tip that I would recommend is that you learn how to solve problems. This is the biggest one, I think, because programming is basically around solving problems, solving day-to-day -day problems. How can you get a plane from one place to the other? That's a problem that can be solved using coding how you can schedule a specific set of classes against a specific set of classrooms. That's a problem and that's done through coding. How you can get, let's say, how Netflix delivers a movie from their service to your TV. So you can see that's a problem and it gets solved using coding. That's a different mindset when you are trying to solve problems because now you're thinking about this problem, how do I solve it using a specific coding techniques? And that's what I want you to change around your mind and around how you think about issues. So let's say, for example, I have an issue right now with a specific process in our application in which a customer can upload a file so they can import that data from the file into the application. What happens is that process is taking a long time. So let's say that it takes an hour. How can I fix that? Do I need to increase the number of servers, the number of computers so it is faster? or maybe I can break down that process instead of being one long, big one hour process to do an import, maybe I can break it in small tasks so they can run in parallel and take advantage of that from the application. Now, if I take advantage of that, then I'm fixing that problem and reducing that hour that takes to load and it to maybe just 10 minutes. So that's the idea, take a problem and look for different options on how to solve it. Because then after you have that process that you're going to implement, like how you're gonna solve that problem step by step, then what you have to do is just code those specific steps to solve the actual problem. So the third tip now comes into choosing a language. And choosing a language, a lot of people procrastinate in this step, like what language do I choose? There are so many out there. But to be honest, the best thing that I can recommend is that you choose any language. Choose one that's something that fits with you and go ahead with it. You can start maybe with Python, for example, that it's very easy to learn. Like It's very easy to implement. But like in my case, for example, I learned using basic, for, which is a, a language uh, from 25 years ago. But I also learned Java and I also did PHP and I also did Visual Basic and I also did JavaScript and also C Sharp, for example. So. In my career, I learned all of these languages and when I had to jump from one language to the other, it wasn't a big deal. You know why? Because all the languages are pretty much the same around the logic. They all have if, loops, arrays, right? So if you know those concepts from one language, when you move to another language, it's pretty easy to move them over. So actually, what I'm trying to say is not a big deal what language you choose. Just choose one and go ahead with it. In my case, I would recommend that you have a look at C Sharp. C Sharp has been around for over 25 years now. It is, once you learn the syntax, it's very similar to other languages out there. Like for example, C JavaScript has a little similar syntax. TypeScript is also very similar to C Sharp. It is something that has been around for a long time and it will help you out learning something that can be implemented in multiple platforms. So that's something that I do. In my case, that's what I learned. If I had to repeat it again, I would do C Sharp again all the way. So fourth tip, is to choose a language that is universal. And when I say universal, is that you can do any type of application in different platforms. For example, let's take C Sharp. In C Sharp, you can develop an application in the web, but you can also develop an application that runs on your desktop, on your computer. And you can also develop an application that runs on Mac OS. And you can also develop an application that runs in your iPhone or an application that runs in Android. Like you can create any type of application using C Sharp. That's what we call a universal language. It means you're gonna learn one language and you're gonna be able to do any type of applications in any platform. This is useful in your career path. 
because if you want to create, for example, in any platform, you go, you know, C Sharp, so you can implement an application in any platform. If you want to create something for yourself, like if you want to be a startup entrepreneur, probably a language like C Sharp, like Native Universal will help you out because if you decide maybe your idea is for a web application, you can use C Sharp. But if you decide that your idea is a mobile application, then you can use that same language. So try to look into that, try to choose a universal language that is available in any platform. Fifth tip that I would recommend is that uh, if you are trying to pursue a corporate job, think about like a job in a company. Usually those companies use Microsoft technologies and usually are developing applications in the .NET environment, which is C Sharp, is always .NET. So if you are looking to go after a corporate job, then probably learning something like C Sharp will help you out. But if you're looking something to get into the tech industry where startups and all that are big tech companies, then it doesn't matter. Uh, those big companies are using different languages and you can go with C Sharp, Python, Avail, Ruby on Rails, like there are a language that these companies use. Just in that case, if that's your career path, just pick one and go with it. Like I said, Python would work, C Sharp would work. You can use any of those. Sixth tip is to a visual code editor. So if you go with Microsoft Technologies, C Sharp or any of those, you can go with Visual Studio. Although Visual Studio now supports multiple languages too. But all my life I've been using Visual Studio. It's very easy to use and it will help you out when you're learning and it help you out when you're coding because you have different snippets, different shortcuts to make things simpler for you. The one that I would recommend that you use is Visual Studio Code. Right now it is free and it supports a number of languages. Now. So if you're going to learn, go to Visual Studio Code, download it and start it in your computer and start learning using that code editor. Think about a code editor like an application where you create a specific a specific purpose document. So let's say Microsoft Word, Google Docs, you create documents in them. If you wanna create a presentation, you use Google Slides and you use Microsoft PowerPoint. If you wanna learn coding, you need an application. Just use Visual Studio Code. Some people use Notepad and I know that works, but for me, I just try to make my life easier. So I just pick a Visual Studio, and which is easier and it simplifies a lot for me. Seventh tip is to look for training. When you're choosing a language, make sure that there is training available on the internet. There is a lot of resources right now. If you go to YouTube, you will find a bunch of videos out there teaching you how to do a specific language, Python, C Sharp, Laravel, like there are a lot of places to learn. Just make sure that what you choose, it is supported out there and people are making videos and are making courses that you can take and will make things easier on you. Look for courses that will help you out with the basics and then it will take you out to the advanced, to the advanced courses and the advanced techniques. Eighth tip is to look into a specific language that is supported. It is a language that has been around for a long time. Python has been around for a long time. C Sharp has been around for 25 years now, but look for something that is supported. You don't wanna learn a language that then a year or two it will be not supported anymore and then your skills will go stale. So try to look for something that has been around for many years that will help you out in your career and what you learn will be available 10 years also for now. The ninth tip that I would recommend is that you use ChatGPT. ChatGPT has made a huge difference with me when even after 25 years of coding because it has helped me out very quickly when I needed to find something or help with an issue. I just go to ChatGPT, ask the question, and it will help me out. You can ask any language or how to do something in a specific language and it will help you out right away. And it will show you the coding and it will and explain to you how, how it, it came out to that conclusion, okay? And the nice thing is that you can try it out in your software and you can try it out in your app and if it works, it works, right? But to me, it has helped me out. It's like having a friend that you can ask questions about, about something. Like it's having that very knowledgeable friend that you can ask a Python question, a C Sharp question, a Laravel question, and it will help you out right away there and it will show you how you can do that. So for sure, go with ChatGPT and will help you out with those problems. Final tip is to choose a project. Learn coding by doing a specific project for yourself. This is the best way of learning to code. Create a calculator, create a task management software, for example, where you can tag your own task and with due dates and reminders. That's the best way of learning to code. Choosing an application and building it yourself. And better yet, if it is something that you care about, if it is something that you're interested in, right? Because then you are actually solving a problem that maybe you have today. A lot of people choose to create a task management software. Why? Because 
Each one of us have a peculiar way of tracking tasks. Most of the software out there are not that customizable, then we decide to do our own thing. That's the easiest way because then you can create your own task management with your own process, but you can choose anything. Just make sure to choose a project and learn coding by doing that project. So thanks again for staying until the end. Hopefully these tips will help you out in your way of learning to code, how they have helped me out in my 25 years. If you have any questions around any of these tips, just feel free to reach and leave a comment in the video and for sure I can respond that. And remember to subscribe.